Of course, it was rather funny, wasn't it, that yeah. such an important case should happen <laughs> while you were on holiday? Yeah, indeed. Very amusing. There you were, having to watch the whole thing from the sidelines, read about it in newspapers. Madame Maigret and I found it very diverting. Fretting about poor old Jean Vier, who was in charge. Mm. And you'd promised your doctor you'd take a break after that terrible bronchitis you had in the spring. Yes. Dr Pardon insisted that I take a holiday. But you didn't go away. No, no. I told headquarters we were away. I put the telephone on the message service. We stayed in Paris. Very romantic. It was. I'm surprised your wife allowed it. Didn't she think you'd run back to the Quai des Orfèvres at the first opportunity? <laughs> my wife knows I keep my promises. Look, there's our concierge out in the street. You'll have to move out of the light, dear, so I can sweep there. She's been giving me funny looks all week. And after that, I must tidy the bedroom. She thinks I ought to be at my office. It's half past ten. Aren't you going down to the cafe, as usual? Half past ten already? What is it? I knew this wouldn't work. I am perfectly happy. All you do is stand there looking out of the window. I like looking out of the window. And how many lorries have you counted this morning? Ah, well, you, know, you see, that's very interesting. Usually, by now, two have come back to the depot and two have gone out, but this morning I've seen three leave and none arrive. Oh, May Gray. My dear, everything's fine. In a while I'll go down to the cafe and buy the morning papers, then I expect we'll have lunch. And then um, a walk, perhaps, if you like. It was such a lovely day. It's all my fault. All it will take is one call from headquarters and you'll go to work. And your terrible cough will come back. I should have been more insistent with that woman at Les Sables de Lonne when I tried to book us a room there and she said it was full. Ah, three lorries all turning up at once, you see? There is order in the universe. Now the concierge has stopped to talk to that young man with a funny eye who, who's taken over the hardware shop across the road. You really are happy, aren't you? Madame Maigret, I am perfectly happy. Mm. I shall go down to the cafe now. And you could do your sweeping in peace. Of course I'm happy. I'm on holiday. <laughs> the usual, sir? Oh, thank you. Oh, here's your paper. Oh, what a headline this morning, sir. Hmm? Dead body in a cupboard. Dead body? Yeah, look at Doctor's wife found dead in a cupboard at her own husband's surgery. Yesterday they found her. Fancy address and all. Boulevard Houseman. Ooh, can you imagine? I'll get the beer, sir. I'd better go and phone headquarters. Oh, sorry, uh, sir. What you want in the phone? Uh, no, 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 not at all, no. Uh, just the beer, thank you. And, uh, and the newspaper? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, sir. Thank you. The dead woman is Eveline Jarve, wife of Dr. Philippe Jarve of 137 Bis Boulevard Houseman. On July the 1st, the Jarves, with their three-year-old daughter and the child's nurse, left Paris for a six-week stay at Cannes. On the same day, a young doctor, Gilbert Necrel, took over the consulting rooms in the Boulevard Houseman as a locum. The couple's servant, a Josepha Chauvet, also remained in Paris. Dr. Negrel is 30, a bachelor. The servant reported a sickly smell in one of the consulting rooms, and together with Dr. Negrel, they opened a cupboard. There, they found the naked body of a woman. It had been bent double to fit into the confined space. This woman was later identified as Madame Jarve. The corpse bore no signs of violence apart from a minor bruise to the right temple. In the absence of Chief Inspector Maigret on holiday, the case is being investigated by Inspector Janvier. On holiday. Your beer, sir? Oh, thank you. They've hauled in both the men for questioning. Sorry? The police. Hmm? They hauled in that doctor who found the body, and they've got the other doctor up from Cannes, the dead woman's husband. They have to make statements. It'll be about money, you know. It will? The dead woman, she's from Concarneau, Aveline Le Grec, from the Canning Company. You know, Le Grec and Laurent Sardines. Oh. Their father owned that. That's in this paper. Look. <clears throat> he died two years ago, which makes her and her brother the sole inheritors. She'd have been loaded, I reckon. Someone's after her money. 
You think so? Sure of it. The body was bent in half. Oh, oh no, sir. Horrible. A medical man, are you? Me? Oh, no. No, no not me. Um, actually, I might just use your telephone, if you don't mind. Oh, be my guess, sir. Dr. Pardon, it's Maigre. Maigre, old boy. How's the holiday? Been spotted yet? Uh, no, not as far as I know. Uh, this Jarve case. My phone hasn't stopped. Hmm? The whole medical profession is gossiping like concierge. Do you know Dr. Jarve? I know of him. Sound practitioner, well thought of. Must be pretty well off with a practice like that. Uh, and the locum? Gilbert Negrel. Hmm. He usually works with Professor Lebier at the School of Medicine, which is a recommendation in itself. Now, look, Maigre, I'm not having you running back to police headquarters. I'm on holiday, remember? Yes, but knowing you... I promised Madame Maigre. Ah. No, no, my friend, I'm following this whole case like any other ordinary member of the public, reading a newspaper and chatting with waiters. Tell you what, old boy, hmm? why don't you come round for dinner with us tonight, you and Madame Maigre? Even better. Why don't we come, pick you two up, take you to a bistro somewhere? Well, that's very kind of you. And, and, and maybe if you could make a few calls in the meantime, find out what you can. Following the case just like any other ordinary member of the public, you mean? I knew I could count on you, Pardon. <laughs> the Jarve family has occupied the second floor of 137 Bis Boulevard Houseman for the last five years. They live in one of the two luxury flats, while the one opposite is used for the doctor's practice. Dr. Negrel claims that on Saturday, he left the surgery at half past five in the evening when the servant, Josepha Chauvet, was still there. No one in the building noticed any unusual arrivals or departures. Madame Chauvet says she spent Sunday with her daughter in the Rue Washington, not returning until yesterday, Monday. And that was when she noticed the smell. You see, pardon, how good I am at being on holiday. He does it well, he doesn't does. he? <laughs> Here I am, in a bistro on the banks of the River Marne. And this afternoon, we took a stroll along the Boulevard Houseman, didn't we, dear? Mm. What about Houseman, eh? Yes, oh, sheer coincidence, my dear fellow. I mean, I did happen to pass 137 and... Looked up at the windows, there's quite a crowd outside as well. I can't think what they hope to see. That's ordinary members of the public for you. <laughs> you see, what I wanted to know is... Um, uh, oh, ladies, uh, how about liqueurs? Uh, waiter, liqueurs for the ladies and uh, Calvados for the doctor and myself. You know, on the roof of our mm -hmm. house, I saw such a lovely outfit in the shop window. The jacket was fitted like, like this. Mm. And it had big buttons. Oh, oh, lovely. So, what I want to know is, pardon, how long after death can you bend a body? It depends on various factors, temperature, that kind of thing. Anything from one hour to about five. Five? I was talking to my colleague Deberlin about all this earlier today. It turns out he's known Philippe Jarve for quite some time. Oh? Determined man, Jarve. Clever, too. Scholarship boy. Comes from quite humble origins. His father died when he was young. Started off in quite a rough practice, but then about five years ago, he went to Concarneau on holiday, and that's when he met Evelyn. Was the... Uh, was the marriage happy? Deberlin thought so, yes. She'd had an unhappy childhood. Her mother died young. She was very shy, Deberlin said. He used to visit them on the Boulevard Houseman. Oh, and he said she had something wrong with her health. Jarve hinted at it from time to time. I don't know what to make of it. Jarve's back at home now, apparently. How do you know that? No, it was on the radio news. The radio? Don't you listen? Well, no, I never thought of it. You, usually, I, I already know. Ordinary uh, member of the public now, Maigre. <laughs> Not tempted to race over to the Quai des Orfèvres. <sighs> Look at this lovely evening, pardon. Look at the river. Huh? The canoes. The lights reflected on the water. Hmm. Meanwhile, poor old Jean V will be sitting in his office, my office, <laughs> beer and sandwiches sent up from the Brasserie Dauphine. And I read in the papers that the examining magistrate is Judge Comilio, who's very tiresome and always inclined to arrest the first available suspect. 
guilty or not. <laughs> and he hates the press. Well, which is why this little reporter man, Lasagna, is sniffing around so fiercely, I imagine. Because if the press think they're being kept away from a story, it just makes them all the more determined. I read Lasagna's report this morning. Apparently, Dr. Jarve lied about where he was. Yes, yeah. he pretended to take a flight to London on that Saturday, but actually, he followed his wife to Paris. Poor old Jean Vier. You can't know, dear pardon, how many phone calls it takes to establish a chain of events like that. Another car with us. <clears throat> Wait here. So, the husband followed the wife to Paris? Yes. Another one, dear? Hmm? Well, it won't do any harm. I'm on holiday after all. <laughs> the post-mortem has revealed that the contusion on the victim's right temple was not the cause of death. The victim was found to have a syringe mark on the left thigh. Tests are now being carried out, and the results will be known. Are you beer, sir? Um, uh, j just a, a coffee, please, uh, and the papers. They should have kept the husband behind bars, if you ask me. Dr. Jean? Yes. What I reckon is he was having an affair with someone and wanted to leave, but... He needed the wife's money, so he gets her out the way, easy, he inherits, starts a new life with the mistress. But, and this needle prick on her leg, he'd know, you see, wouldn't he? Being a doctor. So would the other man, the locum. Yeah, but I mean, no motive, is there? Uh, unless she was involved with him in some way. <sighs> Not her. Seen what she looked like. Yeah. Look at this photo of her. Mm. Hardly a beauty, is she? Not the sort of woman to have a lover. Uh, what I want to you know, know is... the brothers uh, come to Paris. Yves Le Guirec? Yes, well, I heard, yeah. But what I still don't understand is... something it, to say about his sister's husband, I reckon. It's, it's a fact that... Uh, What's that? Could I bother you for a piece of notepaper, not headed, and a pen? Well, of course, sir, right away. <laughs> you want to send a message to someone? In a way, yes. Oh. You wrote what? I wrote, why the devil was she naked? I, I, I disguised my handwriting and sent it off to Jean Vier. Anonymously? Of course. It's been on my mind. Apparently, she was killed sometime between four in the afternoon and ten at night. Now, why would she put herself in the nude during those hours? To change her clothes? To, to have a bath? Not in the consulting rooms? Did the murderer undress her himself? And if so, why? No one was seen leaving a flat with a parcel of clothes. I hope Jean Vier appreciates your note. Just doing my duty, like any other... Ordinary member of the public, yes. Uh, yes. Mm. My wife remarked how well you seemed yesterday evening, how relaxed. Of course I'm relaxed, pardon. I could please myself. I don't have to go to work. This afternoon I'm taking Madame Maigret to the Place du Tertre. <laughs> Three to all about it. It's hardly changed, Maygrave, from when we used to come here. Wine hasn't improved either. Job case, new revelations, three to all about it. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, I'll have uh, this one and this one. <coughs> there we are. You see Job case, new revelations, three to all about it. Here you are, my dear. Job case, new revelations. Look, here's a photo of the poor woman, taken by her brother on holiday. She looks embarrassed. Poor girl. Oh, yeah. Negrel, the locum, has given an interview to Lasagna. He's, he's back home in the Rue Saint-Père. What does he say? Why should I have murdered Madame Jarve? It's a very good question, I'd say. <laughs> it's about love, Michel. I told you. That doctor's wife, she loved that other man. Bet you anything. Uh, but you say everything's about love, Amy. So, perhaps it is. <sighs> what, what else does Negrel have to say? Hmm? Oh, um... He'd known the Jarves about three years, goes for dinner there from time to time. Was he friendly with Madame Jarve? No, not particularly. Did she take him into her confidence? Not really. She, she was a shy woman. Ah, oh, this is interesting. She suffered from Stoker Adams disease, a chronic slow pulse. Dr. Paul will be interested in that. Risk of fainting, fits, sometimes sudden death. Mm. 
What does your paper say, my dear? Well, there's an interview here with her brother. Oh, Yves Le Grec. Mm. He says that at the time that Philippe Jarve married his sister, he had terrible debts, and the father paid them off. And he says that these rumours that his sister had a lover are a terrible slander. A lover, eh? But the concierge where the locum lives said the doctor's wife was a regular visitor. See, I told you so. How can they be lovers? It says in this paper that Negrel is engaged to a medical student. Why would he bother with this doctor's wife? You can tell he's madly in love with her because the reporter says that he smoked all the way through the interview. Oh, you can tell that, can you? Yes, I can, actually. So why did the husband kill her? Don't you know anything about love? What are you thinking, Dad? Hmm? Well, I'm... I'm thinking that perhaps ordinary members of the public can do my job better than I can. Maygrave, good morning. It's Pardon. Just thought I'd let you know they've published the toxicology report. It was digitalis, the injection. A heart drug used to lower the pulse. In the case of Eveline Jarve, it would have been fatal. Ah. Could it have been an accident? That's what I wondered. Say she had a fit of some kind in the consulting rooms. Mm. You might try camphor or pressil mm. to speed up the pulse. The ampoule don't look that different, and if the doctor was in distress, say, he might confuse the two. What's, what's your opinion? Me? Oh, I don't have one. Mm. Have you learnt anything else about Dr. Scharf? One doesn't really like to spread rumours about one's own profession. Oh, no, no, no. He was in debt again, desperate, apparently. Ah. That's all I know. You're still keeping away from the office? Yeah, yeah. very happily, thank you. Morning. I, I wonder if you could put me through to your reporter, Lasagna. Uh, would you, you know, just just tell him it's some information about uh, the Jarve case. Thank, thank you. Hello. Who is this? Oh, uh, Monsieur Lasagne. Uh, I, I'd like to point out uh, an omission in your article. What omission? Look, if, if you're one of these time wasters. Where was Josepha on Saturday afternoon? In the flat, of course. Yes, but which flat? L l listen to me. The Jarves had two servants and a nurse. That's not much staff for a flat as grand as theirs. On the other hand, across the corridor, in the doctor's rooms, there was nobody, once the cleaning was done, to open the door to patients. I think I see what you're getting at. Josepha wouldn't have hung about in the doctor's room when there was work to be done in the flat opposite. The bell for the doctor's door must be connected to the other flat. <laughs> Do you want to tell me who you are? Oh, it's really of no concern. Well, thanks, anyway. I'll check on it. Gilbert Negrel, the locum doctor, was to be married this autumn. His fiancée is Martine Chapuis, daughter of Maître Noël Chapuis, the well-known barrister. She is 24 and has a law degree, but switched to medical school where she met Negrel. She denied rumours of a relationship between her fiancé and Madame Jarve. I wonder how they manage in London or New York. Hmm? Without café terraces. Must be very miserable sitting inside the whole time. It would explain a lot. Hmm. A funny sort of girl. So, who, my dear? This fiancé, Mademoiselle Chapuis. Oh. In the papers, look. Oh. In my day. In your day? Well, she says she visited Negrel at his rooms, unaccompanied. Oh, uh... Well, you can't mean to say you would prove. <laughs> I seem to remember Madame Negrel. Negrel, uh, really? That little wood in the Chevreuse Valley. That's different. Anyway, I didn't go boasting to the papers about it. But, but what does your paper say? Ah, now here we are. <clears throat> Where was Josepha? Exactly. The two doors face each other, and usually Josepha waits in a domestic flat, and the bell rings in both, as I thought. Good for young Lasagne. <laughs> young Lasagne? 
anyone would think you'd personally sent him to find out. Me? Good heavens, no. Hmm. What a terrible morning. Look at this rain. And only one lorry so far. Have you got any plans? Not particularly. What day is it? Friday. Might just go down to the cafe. Of course. Madame Migri, I'm wondering whether you're a little tired of this Parisian holiday. No. Perhaps we should go to the seaside after all. Oh, I hear they are having very good weather at the coast. We, we've done too much walking around. And the Paris forecast is for more rain. I suppose you, you could find out how that woman in Les Sables de Long is placed for next week. I think I'll be free by then. Free, Maigret? I, I do like to see a case through, Madame Maigret. According to the nurse, Claire Jusron, Dr. Jarve had been having an affair with the daughter of his servant, Josepha. The girl is called Antoinette Chauvet. Last Saturday, when Dr. Jarve arrived in Paris, he hurried to her flat in the Rue Washington. The mother, Josepha, claims that she joined them there. Meanwhile, police have revealed that on the Friday evening, Madame Jarve made a lengthy phone call to Gilbert Necrel. That gives the doctor an alibi then, doesn't it? He spent all that Saturday at his mistress's, and her mother was there. <laughs> Worst luck for him, eh? Yeah, but, uh, they might be lying. Oh, well, I was to say, what, that nurse, she might be lying too. Saw that photo of in the paper, didn't you, eh? <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear, there's a woman who doesn't like men. Eh? Oh, you can tell that, can you? <laughs> yes. Another beer, sir? Oh, yes, please. They found her jewels, you know. Whose jewels? The wife's. That tight-lipped nurse, when, when the coppers were leaving, she said, did they want to take the jewels? And there they were. Great big case of them. Millions of francs worth, apparently. Look, it's in this edition. But the husband was in debt. It's revenge, isn't it? Hey. He gets a mistress, she spends all their money on jewels. They like that, aren't they, women? Oh. I'll get your beer. Well, what I want to know is, did Dr. Jarve know there was a relationship between his wife and the locum? Uh, and did Madame Jarve know about her husband's affair? Well, we left the wait for the police to find out about all that, won't we, sir? I can't see why Jean Vier isn't going to Concarneau. He's only just come back from Cannes. He needs to get a clearer picture of Evelyn Jarve. What are you doing? I'm oh, just writing Jean Vier a note. Telling him to go to Concarno. You frighten him. He won't know it's from me. Now, is it another stroll? In the rain. We can take shelter in a cafe. And buy yet more newspapers. Here we are. Look. They've arrested Negrel. And here's his fiance insisting he's innocent. She stopped denying his affair with the doctor's wife. Uh, Yes. These modern young women. I'd have called off the wedding. <sighs> Perhaps it's like those soldiers you see at fun fairs shooting at old bottles. Me, I mean, playing at being a detective. It's a fact she was naked. Didn't Negrel come to visit her and succumb, even though he'd been trying to end it? And, and, and then perhaps they quarrelled? Perhaps he hit her? And then, in a panic, gave her an injection? Or was it Jav? But he'd been to see his mistress. Why would he then call on his wife? Or perhaps it was all planned by Jav because he wanted to get rid of her. Oh. Let poor old Jean Vier sort it out. Do you think Negrel is innocent? I don't know. I'll just have to wait for tomorrow's newspapers. The scene of the investigation has moved to Concarneau. Maître Chapuis, father of the suspect's fiancée, has arrived in this seaside town determined to clear the name of his future son-in-law. At the same time, the brother of the dead woman has returned to his home here 
and is threatening to sue anyone who sullies the good name of his sister. Rumours here are circulating about Madame Jarve, who, it is claimed, conducted affairs with various men in the town from quite a young age. That's why they don't have cafe terraces in London. Hmm? Because it's always raining there, isn't it? Like this. Mm -hmm. Do you believe all this, Maigret? About poor Madame Jarve having all these lovers? I suppose not all women are as... But look, there's an interview here with some old school friend of hers who says that Madame Jarve seduced a local man when she was only 14. Well, why do they have to print all this in the papers, Maigret? It might be relevant, I suppose. Oh, I feel sorry for her. She was a neglected child looking for love. She just looked in the wrong place. Oh. And even if she was having an affair with Negrel... Uh, yes? No one really loved her. Dr. Jarve had Antoinette and Gilbert was engaged to this clever medical student. Poor Madame Jarve. So, perhaps my waiter in the cafe is right after all. What did he say? That her collecting all those jewels was a kind of revenge. Oh. Oh, dear. What? This headline, it says, Has Maigret been called in? Oh, dear. They've tracked us down to Les Sables d'Olon and found that we're not there. Well, too bad. Oh, look at this. Martine Chapuis has given an interview. She says that she knew about the relationship between her fiancé and Madame Jarve, but she says it was just an affair, nothing serious. Well, I don't understand it. Hmm? If you've been behaving like that within weeks of our marriage... Maigret, you're not listening to me. No, but there's something, there's something... Something about the landing, the two doors. Why was she still naked? New developments in the Boulevard Houseman case. Oh, shh! Maigret, the afternoon. radio. Both Dr. Jarve and his mistress, Antoinette Chauvet, were taken in for questioning. Police have also reported that a button was found in the doctor's rooms which had been torn from the jacket of Gilbert Negrel. Full details in our news bulletin. Uh, can we have our bill, please? Yes, monsieur. Are we going? Yes. Where to? We're going to get a taxi to the corner of Boulevard Richard Lenoir and the Boulevard Voltaire in case the press are outside our flat. You mean I'm to go in alone? We'll go in as if nothing was up. If there are reporters, say we've come to spend a few hours in Paris and that I'm out in town somewhere. And, and if I'm not back for dinner, eat without me. Oh, and perhaps if you wouldn't mind, you could pack us a suitcase or two. Oh, Maigret, are you going to the office after all? Madame Maigret, I promised you I wouldn't. And since when have I broken a promise to you? Taxi! The papers are right, Chief Inspector. You are in Paris. Just visiting, you know. Calvados, uh, I'll oh. join you. We'll be closing up soon. <clears throat> Your uh, usual seat is free. Hmm? Mind oh. you, by this time of night, all the seats are free. <laughs> Apart from those two salesmen over there, oh. that girl on her own in the corner. Mm -hmm. Uh, Get across the sea, Jean, you? No, I... Uh, no, you no. can see your office window from here, you know? Yeah, so you can. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> uh. Cheers. Uh, I said to Maria here, oh, mm. didn't I, girl? I said they'd be getting you back. Mm. <laughs> Only Inspector Maigret can sort this out, I said. But they're all lying, aren't they? Every last one of them. Uh, that mistress, that servant, mm. uh, that nurse down in Cannes, uh, Mademoiselle Jusseron. Claire, isn't it? Uh, uh, sorry, do you say something, sir? Mm? Oh, no, no. That nurse, she hates men. You can tell from the photo in the paper. Yeah, mm. but that's just it, you see. That type, in my experience. Sometimes they they hate every man, but but one, which would explain... Yeah, four hours they've been up there, questioning that doctor. Of course. Could I, could I use your phone? Oh, be my guest, sir. <laughs> Yes, 
thank you. I, I, I want a villa Marie-Thérèse at Cannes. Mademoiselle Jusserand, please. Hello? Who is this? Uh, hello? Trap? Yes, it's me. I, I can hardly hear you. It, it's Monsieur. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry about the noise. The baby's crying. Uh, tell me, Claire, when the police asked you about the phone call that my wife made to Paris on Friday, did you tell them you'd spoken to me about it? Certainly not. I knew I could rely on you. Thank you very much. That's all. Did you uh, get through all right, sir? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, now, <coughs> sir, that young woman in the corner, hmm? she's been watching the Palais de Justice the whole time she's been here. Yes. Oh, I, I noticed her, too. Yeah. Um, I'll have another Calvados, please, Victor. Right away, sir. Right. Mm. Mind if I join you? Hmm? Oh. Okay. You took your time. Uh, I wasn't sure it was you to start with. Oh, well, I, I, I recognise you so, from the papers. Although you're, you're, you're prettier. Oh, uh, just because I'm at medical school. No one seems to think a girl can be pretty and clever. Uh, will you join me in a Calvados? Uh, Victor? Uh, another one? Sir? You must be needing it, Mademoiselle Chapuis. Thanks. Why aren't you over there? I'm on holiday. Really? Uh, really? What, in Paris? Well, even Janvier doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> so why are you watching your own window? <clears throat> oh, at least if it was your case, you'd understand. <sighs> understand what, mademoiselle? Well, that Gilbert didn't kill that woman. Are you sure? Ah, you see, he may be clever. But you can still blush. Uh, I wasn't blushing. You've had your doubts about him. Oh, do you mind if I smoke? Oh, not at all. I'm not sure how to say this. Oh, it's, it's about how Gilbert would be when he's... when he's with a woman. Oh. Now, you know that he and I haven't waited until we got married to... Oh, the press have loved all that, those sleazy reporters. But anyway, the point I'm making is that Madame Jarve's body was completely naked. All right, uh, that's exactly what I've been trying to work out. Oh, well, this is very personal, Monsieur Maigret. But with Gilbert, oh, that simply wouldn't be possible. What I mean is... Mademoiselle, you can you can trust me. Well, Gilbert would have been naked too. There. I know him. I love him. He's shy and sensitive. And it's not as if they'd have had long. I mean, they were in the consulting rooms. That servant could have come in at any minute. He'd have... Even with that woman, he'd have wanted to be on equal terms. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't normally talk in this way with a man I've only just met, but... Martine, uh, if I may call you that, I, I believe you. Then you believe that Gilbert didn't do it? What we know, my dear, is that on Saturday afternoon, Madame Jarre visited the consulting rooms where she met her death from a fatal injection. We know that your Gilbert was in the consulting room that afternoon. We also know the Dr. Jarre had left for south of France and arrived in Paris that day. His alibi has been provided by his mistress and her mother, which makes it unreliable, of course. Mm. We know that anyone in a flat would hear the doorbell for the consulting rooms, so if Dr. Jarre was in the flat, he would know when his wife was there. We know, too, that your Gilbert had a fierce argument with Madame Jarre that afternoon. We also know, however, that Dr. Jarve was in debt and his wife was wealthy. 
and that the marriage appears to have been loveless. Oh. Look. Look at that window. You can see someone pacing. Uh, it'll be Jean Vier. Uh, will you excuse me for a moment, my dear? Mm. Have you got some notepaper without heading? And an envelope? I certainly have, sir. Uh, here. Uh, that boy is washing up in the kitchen. Could you ask him to deliver a note for me? Yeah, of course, sir. Yeah. With the attention of Inspector Jean Vier. Very urgent. Javre learned from the nurse on Friday night that his wife was coming to Paris. Are the uh, boys waiting, sir? Ask him to take this envelope to that policeman by the gate across their headquarters. Uh -huh. He must tell the policeman it is to go directly to Inspector Jean Vier. Uh -huh. He's to answer no questions and then go straight home. Uh, are you uh, playing a joke on them, sir? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, we're in a manner of speaking. <laughs> what have you been doing? Oh, I'm being an ordinary member of the public. <laughs> Sending notes to the police. Oh, look, there's a the boy. There he goes. Good. Oh, they're letting him in. Was your note to do with what I told you? Uh, no. To do with your phone call? Yes, yeah. Another Calva? Uh, uh, Victor? Sure. Oh, it's funny. You wouldn't think that Dr. Jaffe was a murderer. Mm. In my experience, my dear, no one looks like a murderer. Thank you, Victor. Even murderers. Look, boys come back down again. Excellent. Well, what now? Uh, well, we wait. Mm. Well, it's late. These things can go on for hours. Oh. They want to close up here. Yes. Shall we uh, go for a walk? Hmm? Mm. Uh, the bill, Victor? Certainly, sir. Oh, I'll pay for my own drinks, thank you. You are a modern young woman, aren't you? Oh, modern. That's the other word people use. You can be modern and clever, or you can be pretty, but not both. What do you think? Oh, mademoiselle, I know what I think. <sighs> do the barges come past here all night? Yes. Look. The lights are still on in my office. It's not as if Negrel really had a motive. No. Particularly as you knew about him sleeping with Eveline Jarve. Mm. Why are you lying? What do you mean? I knew all about their silly affair. But he didn't tell you she'd come up from Cannes on Saturday to see him. No. No. Nor that she'd been to his place since you and he started. Well, he respects my feelings. Mm. Anyway, I'm the one he loves. You do believe he's innocent, don't you? Yes. Yes. I do. Dr. Jarve knew from Friday night that his wife would be coming to Paris on Saturday. He followed her. Antoinette, his mistress, was just the alibi. What I don't like is the fact he undressed her. He must have wanted it to look... He must have wanted suspicion to fall on Gilbert. Thought he was being clever. But it's the clever ones who get caught. Always one detail too many. I'm absolutely sure that Jarve was in the flat opposite while his wife was with your fiancé in the consulting rooms on that Saturday. Whatever passed between Gilbert and Eveline that day... I don't want to know. Some kind of scene. Perhaps she was pleading with him, clinging to him. She tore a button off his coat. Then, at half past five, Gilbert left. Jarve 
only had to cross the landing. Don't tell me any more. And afterwards, her husband undressed her and disposed of her clothes. All the lights are still on. What if they don't understand those men up there? If you went up now, you could make shh, sure... Shh, shh. What? Something's happening. Footsteps in the yard. Someone's being taken down to the cells. Oh, Dr. Jav? Yeah. It must be. There's a gate. And look. The lights are going out. Here they come. Yeah. jean will be out in a minute. Oh, oh dear me. Um, handkerchief, here. No, oh, thank you. He's getting into the squad car. Uh, it's all right, he's alone. Who? Janvier. If he hadn't won, he'd be taking Dr. Jav home, too. Well... There you are, young lady. It's all over. Oh, thank you, Inspector. For what? Oh, for everything. Me? I did nothing. I'm on holiday. Tomorrow, I'm taking my wife to the seaside. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Tomorrow? I, I promised my wife a proper vacation. Oh, well, she's lucky, your wife. Yes. Well, she needs a holiday. No, I didn't mean the holiday. Monsieur Maigret, oh. <coughs> a card for you. Post for you? How did they know we were here? It's from Janvier. Oh, what does he want now? Bothering oh. you on holiday? No, no, no. It, it just says, thanks, chief. <laughs> <laughs> George Simenon's Maigret's Little Joke was dramatised by Alison Joseph. Nicholas Leprevo was Chief Inspector Maigret and Julian Barnes was Simenon. Madame Maigret was played by Julie Legrand and Dr Pardon by Philip Joseph. Martine Chapuis was played by Jamie Barbacoff. Lasagna by Harry Myers. The Waiter at the Café by Philip Fox. Victor by Johan Meredith. The girl on the next table, Cherie Taylor-Baptiste. The boy on the next table, Chris Moran. Mademoiselle Jusserin, Rachel Atkins. The music was composed and directed by Lucinda Mason-Brown and performed by the Viper's Dream Quartet. The director was Ned Chaillet.